Okay, so I'm given this curve already over here, my normal curve, and I can see that my mean is 3.34, and then they give me my standard deviation. So it says, what is the minimum of this undergraduate grade point averages that would still place the students in the top 10%? So I just redrew this down here to show you that the top 10% would be up here. But remember now, and of course that would be this in decimal, I need to find this Z value and how you read the Z value is from all the way left up to the Z. So I actually would be looking for this. Now you might say, first of all, why would you be looking for that? because I'm trying to solve for X. So this is my normal, how we standardize our data. And if I do some crazy algebra, I can actually solve this for X. So that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find this X value, all right, based on this mean. So what I need to do is find a Z table and sometimes the lab will give you one to click on. I would just always have one handy. I tend to use a website, so I just, if I can find it, I just found this Z table here. Let me make that stuff go away. Got a nice little coffee thing there. All right, so I'm looking for within the table that 0 .9500. I know it won't be on the negative end because the negative goes all the way to, to the halfway point, 0.5. So I need to go to the positive side and look for inside the table the value that looks to be the closest to 0.900. There goes my dog barking. All right, so I'm looking around, looking around. It looks like this point. 0.8997 would be the closest. So now I read the Z value of 1.28. All right, so I go back. He's going to bark for a while, so that ain't going to be good. Scotty! <laughs> so I got 1.28. Sorry. I get 1.28 for my Z. So I come over here. I put my mean, sorry, which is 3.34. I put my Z, 1.28. And then multiply times my standard deviation. Get up and close the door. And I just simply throw all this into a calculator and I get 3.57 which makes sense because it's higher than the mean and I am to the right of the mean. Okay, so now let's say that I want to, let's get rid of all that. Let's say now that I want to actually find the middle 50%. Well, I'm doing the same thing here. I'm going to put my mean down the middle, 3.34. But now what I'm looking at is, I don't know that this is exact, but this middle 50%. So in other words, from here to here is 50%, or again, we read the table in decimal. So what I need is a lower Z and an upper Z to find this lower X and upper X. Again, how do you read this table? Well, you have to understand all, the, all three pieces here have to add to 100%. So that tells me this is 25%, and that piece is 25%, because 25 and 25 would be 50, plus this middle 50 would give me 100. So to find this Z value, I'm looking in the table for the value closest to 0.2500. So away I go back to my Z table, let's hide you. And I know 0.2500 is going to be on the negative side because of my picture, but also because it's less than 0.500. So I look, I look around until I can find the value closest to 2.500.
and it looks like it's this negative 0 0.67. Okay, so the 0.2514. So that's what it looks like. Let me go back here. There we go. So it looks like this Z value right here would be negative 0 0.67. Now, I could go back to the table and look up this Z value and hopefully know, you know you're going to look up the 25% plus the 50%, which would be 75%. I don't need to because I know this is symmetric, so that's positive 0 0.67. And thus, now I can find my x is 3.34 minus 0 0.67 times my standard deviation for the lower. My x equals 3.34 plus 0 0.67 times my standard deviation for the upper. And with rounding, I get 3.22 and 3.46. But the whole idea is how do you read? You really have to get where you understand how to read this Z table.